It was after I finished working on this picture I had an idea for its final presentation and that is to create a border, a framework using the cookie cutter or custom shape tool. We're also going to be using the filter gallery and a few other little nifty tips and tricks along the way. Right before we start one thing uh, we're going to just check out is the image. We're going to drop down to resize. We're going to come to image size. Now the actual dimension of this is 2400 pixels in the width which gives us a document size of 8 inches with a resolution of 300 pixels per inch. There's a reason for pointing this out and I will tell you all as soon as we reach that stage. For the next stage though what we need to do is to put a new empty layer directly underneath our background layer. Now we can't do it at the moment because this layer has a padlock indicating it is partially locked but I've got a key. Just bring your cursor over the word background double click that opens up new layer you can give it a name of your choice but I really like layer 0 so we're going to click OK to that there's our layer 0 and you'll notice no padlock OK for the next stage hold down command or control so press command or control hold it down and now come up to the create new layer icon because you are holding down command or control as soon as you click on the create new layer icon it places that new empty layer underneath layer 0 we're going to switch off layer 0 so we're now looking at the checkable background of layer 1 we're going over to image we're dropping down to fill layer and when fill layer opens with content use we're going to come in and we're going to select white and we're going to click OK to that right while we're here we're going to go over to filter we're going to drop down to filter gallery and when filter gallery opens I bet you can't guess where I'm going to go we're going to drop down to texture we're going to click on texturizer and when texturizer opens I'm going to select for this particular image brick now this was the reason for pointing out the file size of the image if you are using something like uh, sandstone or canvas you really don't need to worry about the document size but something like brick yes you do because the larger the image is the tinier these bricks will become so you need to have a a file size of probably the maximum I'm using now which is 8 inches in the on the width but you can see exactly the way this is looking right I've taken the scale in to compensate as well because usually it's around about that figure there and you can see as you drop it down you've got some very very small bricks bring it right the way up to 200 pixels per inch and I think this is going to suit the image yeah, much better like that the relief I'm leaving at 14 now the lighting this is important as well because if I just change it to bottom you can see the way yeah that now looks if you go to bottom left it's, yeah, it looks okay but if we come to uh, top and you can see the way not particularly good with that but top right and the whole thing changes like the way that's working so we're going to click OK through that comes you can see a little bit of lineage coming through with this now don't worry about it it's purely because we're in a zoom magnification of an odd amount which is 40.42 percent so as I say don't worry about that at this stage switching back on layer 0 clicking on layer 0 to make sure this is the live layer we're now going to come over to the modify section of the toolbar we're going to click on our cookie cutter our custom shape tool I always have a problem with that word cookie cutter for some reason right and um, if we just take a look this is the default one okay you got a heart I'll tell you what any of these can be extremely useful it is well worth experimenting I have done quite a few uh, wedding engagements uh, Valentine cards where you can use the heart shaped one and there's loads of others as well now clicking on the little arrow drops it down there's our default now it is off the recording screen but you know take a look at some of the others click on where it says default and you've now got a pop-up menu and the one I'm heading for is our crop shapes now when crop shapes opens just scroll through and there's some fantastic ones here the one I'm after is this one so I'm going to click on it you can see there it is it's just changed in fact I'm gonna I'm gonna go for a different one I'm gonna go for this one here right once you've selected it press enter or return that has now removed that panel clicking on tool options that has removed that panel we can now bring our cookie cutter our custom shape tool into the picture and as we click down as we drag it out when I release it watch what happens 
how it reveals that brick wall behind. You can also see we've got ourselves a transform tool as well. But what this is transforming, if I just bring it in, the picture is staying as it is. So we're not making the picture bigger or smaller. It's just the amount of the picture we're actually revealing, which can be pretty useful because it'll allow us to come in. Like, do we need quite so much on the bottom? So you can bring that in like this, a little bit more on this side. And you can click in the center and you can move the whole thing over. So it really is, it's a great way of being able to come into the image, make some adjustments. You can even right click, take a look at using scale. You can go for skew, distort, perspective, experiment. It's fantastic what you can actually come up with. Right, uh, let's just take a look and yeah, I think that looks pretty good as it is, perhaps a little bit more. I'm going to go for distort and I'm just going to lift this top corner up here, revealing more of that graffiti and uh, perhaps just going for skew on this and pulling that down in the bottom corner and out a little bit like that. That looks good, dropping it down a touch or two, double clicking to apply and there it is. Right, I like the way this is working. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to come up to layer. We're going to drop down to layer styles. We're going to go across to style settings and we're going to head for drop shadow. It's well worth experimenting though. You might want to try something like bevel. Now what bevel is going to do, it's going to give you the impression that it's now actually inside that brick wall. So in other words, we've punched a hole in the brick wall. We're now looking through and you can see the drop shadow come in there. The direction is 120 uh, degrees. If you click on down, you'll notice the way it's swung everything around. And if you come in, we can swing this around as well. So you can place that drop shadow wherever you want it. And just bringing it around into that area there. Perhaps something like this, just pulling it back a little bit. Perhaps something like that could look pretty good. I'm going to switch it off. I just you know, it is well worth experimenting with, but uh, the one I'm after is this one here. It is the drop shadow. Let's take it up, the size up a little bit. We can now bring our cursor out. We've now got the move tool. I'm going to click down and I'm just going to drag our drop shadow out, something like this. And you can see the way the shadow on the image, I'm just following that with th that there, and just dropping the opacity down a touch or two. We're going to click OK. A little FX has now been added onto this layer, indicating that a layer style has been applied. And I'll come back to that just a little bit later. Right, let's click on layer one because we've got a white brick wall. Not so sure white is actually working. So by clicking on this layer, we can now come up to our adjustment layers. And we're going to click on this. We're going to drop down. We're going to go to hue saturation. When hue saturation opens, we're going to click on colorize. Now colorize is going to allow us to actually paint our wall. We can come in and we can just add a little bit of, uh, by coming into the hue, now dropping the saturation and the lightness down. There it is. You can see the coloring coming through on that wall. I'm going to drop it back into that area there. You can have whatever color you want. And I'm just going to play with the saturation and just perhaps drop it down, making it a little bit darker. Taking the saturation up a touch or two there, giving us a nice red brick wall into that area. Once you're happy, just click on the little cross. That's applied it. There it is there. You can always come in as well. You can always just drop the opacity down if you want to or make it a little bit darker as well. Just come in and drop the lightness down into that area. I think a darker background would suit this image and click OK. Right, once you're happy with it, take a final look around. I'm going to press uh, V on the keyboard or pick up the move tool. We're going to click on layer zero. So this is our live layer. We can still move this around. So bringing it into that area there would look pretty good. If we double click where it says effects, that brings back the layer styles. We can now bring our cursor up. We can make uh, any final adjustments with the drop shadow on this. So just placing it in to that area there. Looks pretty good. I'm going to click OK. Bring in my move tool up. Just going to move it up a notch or two. And you can see it's just a little bit big. So what we can do is we can come to image transform and we can come to free transform shape and we can just come to the side here and just drop it down in size a little bit and just lift it up a touch or two double click into apply there it is job done like the way this is working that looks pretty good just the sort of thing i had in mind for the final stage simply go to layer drop down to 
flatten image that's going to flatten everything down we've now got ourselves a background layer we can now come over to file we can drop down to save as nearly missed it and yep if we just click on this little arrow you can see a much clearer way we're going to place it and I'm going to come in I'm going into my images working and if I come down there's my finish folder that's where I want to place it but not as a Photoshop file I'm either going to choose if I was going to use it for web use I'd use a JPEG if I was going to print it I'd save it as a TIFF file I would then click and go for a JPEG I'm going to click save it's in my finish folder and there it is and uh, yeah click OK to that it's now asking us for the JPEG options I'm just going to drop it back to that area to, there to number 8 and click OK job done there it is just a great way to change the way that you can present your pictures and create a border using that cookie cutter or custom shape tool and the filter gallery so go on give it a try but until the next time it's happy imaging and take care